looking into, so we make a special point to say hello to you all and invite you to share. The reason I asked Dennis to come up here, uh, he did an excellent lesson last week over at New Beginnings. And uh, I was I was like, I was like, okay, I can own this guy. <laughs> you know, I was a little reserved there for a minute. But uh, he did real good. And I, I think uh, uh, Anita did post it uh, on Facebook Live, so you can go back to her page and scroll back and see that message was a great message. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so just give us a hello this morning, uh, uh, two minutes, and uh, be blessed in Jesus' name. Oh, Amen. I need a mic. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Uh, no, you're not. Come on. <laughs> People say that, but when you, it's not on the tape. You know, you can't hear it. Blah, blah. Go ahead, son. Hello. 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 That's Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning, Salvation Temple. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Dennis Thompson, and I did a message last week on um, praise and worship. Yes. Uh, basically, renewing your mind, um, getting your mind reset for praise and worship. And it's basically... Um, tabling after what Pastor Lane had did the following Sunday and what Pastor Scott had did mm-hmm. last Sunday. Amen. Um, I thought Pastor Scott was going to preach my message last Sunday, <laughs> and uh, I was sitting there telling Nita, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> and she's like, what's going on, what's going on? Because I hadn't told her what my message was going to be. But um, Pastor Scott hadn't spoken my message. I, he just used a couple of scriptures that I used. Um, basically, it was teaching um, the congregation um, how we have to get our minds right about praise and worship. First of all, um, again, letting you know that praise and worship is not a reason. God is asking you to be here. Yes. It's important that we are here for praise and worship. Um, yes. These people are not up here just to entertain you. Mm-hmm. They are up here praising God Amen. for you to encourage them to praise God, yes. for you to encourage them to praise God, for you to Amen. encourage them to praise God, mm-hmm. for you. <laughs> not for you to encourage God to praise God. Um, It's very important that you get your minds back right to where you were when you first got saved. It's important that we don't let the world take over. We get so comfortable that it's okay to be late for praise and worship. It's not okay. We have to get back and take back what the devil stole from us. The devil is so cunning and so crafty. I, I instructed the congregation that he is behind music, and we all know that Lucifer is behind music and this, that, and the other. But music is very important to each and every one of us. Um, yes. It's amazing how he uses everything and destroys everything that God has made and turns it around and acts like it's no big deal. But he's using everything that God has for us and turns it around and acts like it's no big deal. Just like praise and worship. It's no big deal for us to act like it's no big deal. We just stand there like, mm, okay, whatever, when is it going to be over? But that is very, very important. Music helped destroy nations. Mm-hmm. Music helped confuse enemies. Music yeah, helped healing. break walls. Music yeah. helped people get out of jail. Music yeah. saves nations. Yeah. Yeah. Music can help destroy anything that's going on in your life. Mm-hmm. So if you just... If you just bring yourselves back to when you first got saved, when I when I was going through heck, <laughs> music helped save me. Yeah. Music has brought all of you back through. Mm-hmm. If you just remember when you were going through the worst times in your life, if you just sat there and sung a song, mm-hmm. music brought you through. Amen. When you couldn't get through anything else, music brought you through. Yeah. So I just want to bring you back and just bring you through, just to remind you, bring yourselves through and bring yourselves back. Back early enough to get back to praise and worship and help the praise team, help you yeah. help yourselves to get back in time for praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Facebook page. I think I, I, I posted it also, shared it on my page. 
you have to scroll back a lot to get to it on my page. But it's there. It'll be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. And uh, thank you, sir, for sharing that with us this morning. All right, let's get ready to get into the message that God has in store for us today. Of course, when he was thinking, when he was talking about uh, uh, music and how music has a way of blessing uh, our lives, I I, uh, I thought back to even just, just last night. <laughs> I had some. Uh, I, had, I spent a lot of time listening to uh, 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 Bishop David Ellis and uh, um, uh, Pastor Clay Evans and and a lot of the old timers. I was just enjoying myself, uh, being blessed in Jesus' name from the goodness that God has through uh, magnificent music presentation. So uh, let's 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 work together. Let's pull pull together. Let's encourage our praise and worship team, and uh, we're still open for people to join us uh, and be a part of what, uh, join praise and worship team, and be a part of what it is that God uh, desires to do. Um, uh, he, okay, and be blessed in that way. All right, let's take this time, get ready for this message for this morning. I have just a brief prayer to do, and then we'll get started. Thank you, Father. For this time together today, we believe and say in Jesus' name that Holy Spirit is living big on the inside of us, and he's helping us know uh, information, insight, inspiration to help us be able to do the things that you've called us to do. We pray your blessings upon the members of the congregation here in Salvation Triple Church. Uh, members across this country and even around other parts of the world. Thank you, sir, for the manifestation of your goodness in our lives today. And this is our prayer to you. In the matchless name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. All right, the e, the e word message for today is entitled, God with us. Um, and I'm just trying to think of some kind. i tell you what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to take your hand and just pat yourself on the forehead and then pat yourself on the chest area and then pat yourself back on the forehead. Yeah. And in essence, what I'm wanting you to, to, to uh, embrace when you do that little example is to <laughs> recognize that God is with us, with you, right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's with you. He's with us right now. So, an introduction statement. It is good news that God is with us all the time. Hallelujah. Yeah. Especially when we're driving and, and, and other kind of things. He's with us all the time. And even more good news is that we can choose to believe that he is with us, and not just the fact that he's with us, but we can communicate with him all the time. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Now we've had sessions in in uh, in, uh, in our preaching time, teaching time, where we've uh, done our best to indicate to all of us that uh, yeah, back in the day and in other places you go to. You'll find times where people are doing uh, what formal kind of prayer things and using uh, uh, King James, the Lithobesian uh, language, and thee and thou and thine stem art and uh, uh, deep voice and whatever, whatever, whatever. But when you really break it down and really uh, uh, open yourselves up to the magnificent recognition that God is with us, actually prayer becomes paying attention to just talking to God. Mm -hmm. uh, having conversation. Just sharing with him like if you're sitting here talking to somebody else, then that. I don't, I don't see anybody uh, you know, raising their voice and, 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 and shaking their arms and all that kind of stuff when you talk to each other. Well, guess what? Communicating with God is in that same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prayer time with God is in that same way. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the clue that I haven't put up 
on the note yet, but one of the magnificent things to recognize and realize is that as we talk with God, he hears us. Yeah. Amen. And he does yeah. Yeah. answer us. Yeah. And as I said in the previous message, he knows everything anyhow. Yeah. Come on now, say something to me. Yeah. He is everywhere present anyhow. Yeah. And to top all of that off, he has all power. Yeah. Yeah. And that's God that is with us now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the number three point of news is that we have breaking news for you. Flash, flash, breaking news, news alert, alert. <laughs> and the breaking news flash is that he will lead us by his spirit in us. Yeah. Yes. Now here we go with this point about mm, having a sense of obedience with this point about working with our own selves in light of dealing with what I call concrete cranialism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, you, maybe you know it better by just being hard there. Because yeah. yeah. that's the way, con and you know how concrete is. You know, you, 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 you mix it all up, you put the water in, and you stir it all up like a lot of folks thinking. And then once it's set, boom, it's just there. Uh, mm -hmm. And so it becomes tremendously important for us to make a decision that we will be obedient, that in our communications hook up with God, that we will not be so hard on having our position about things and be more open for he, God, Holy Spirit, who knows everything, is everywhere present, and has all power. And the theme that we've been pushing throughout this year is that Everything going on in your life throughout this year has already been handled by God. Yes. 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 And so we scuffle and struggle needlessly yes. when we insist on thinking that we have a better idea, a better way to get anything is done than God does. Mm. Amen. So then, the breaking news flash is that he will lead us by his spirit, his spirit, his spirit in us. That's what I should tap your head, then tap yourself, his spirit in us. He's in our thinking process. He's in our emotions, he really is. He's in our heart. He is in our spirit self on the inside. Whew. I, I don't have time to sing one of those songs no, never alone. Amen. He promised never to leave me. Yeah. Never to leave me yeah. alone. Yeah. And so my invitation this morning is to challenge us to decide that this next word up here, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. <laughs> Emmanuel, Emmanuel, that means God with us. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the, the, the song about beautiful name uh, he, he, God Jesus didn't count it a, a marvelous thing to just stick up in heaven but he came himself Amen. and he came here to be with us mm -hmm. and he gave us his name mm -hmm. and when we use his name it's just the same as his very same power yeah. God is with us yes. then I want you to personalize it and say it out loud and mean it from your heart God is with me. Come on, say it. Come on. God God with me. One more time, say it. God is what? God is with me. One more time. God is what? God with is me. with me. Hallelujah. So then now, let's get into some scripture text message here. The main scripture text is found in the first epistle of God. And I'm not using fancy scriptures today. I'm not using something way back that you've never seen or heard before. Uh, I'm coming to say to you today 
that this is God's word to us now. It is true. It is a lie. And the power of this word will manifest in us. In the first epistle of John chapter 4 at verse number 4. And I've done it before and I'm going to do it again today. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Uh, okay, I'm letting some things work through my thinking process when I'm dealing with the them part of being overcome. <laughs> but that's anything that comes. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Let's, let's focus this on being anything that comes from the enemy. Okay? Now, your neighbor down the street, listen to me, even though that's like they may act like, they did not come from the enemy. Hmm? Technically, basically, by and large, they're here, there, in your neighborhood, they're there at Walmart, Kmart, wherever else you might run into them, they're there, and they have a right to be there. Come on, just as much as you have a right to be right there right now. So when we're talking here about being children of God and overcoming them, I'm specifically wanting you to focus on the them being those things that the enemy tries to bring against you to shut you down. Amen. 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 And so then, therefore, God is telling us that we have. And here's a great uh, position to develop in our own personal thinking process, that we have overcome them. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when our mouth starts talking about, well, when I get a better job, I'm going to. No. Or when uh, when this happens and that, I'm going to. No. No. He said here, we have. And, and so when we receive that we have, then it becomes important for us to think like we have, to talk like we have, to live like we have. Not based on how we feel, no, based on what God said in his word. And he said we have overcome. I don't know, a lot of us have been out of school for a long time, uh, or, or, or we, we have to go do a test, or perform some specific function, your attitude, when you already have the answers, the attitude is a whole lot different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Over and against when you don't know and you didn't yeah. study yeah. And, and, and that kind of thing. You, you know, you're uneasy and you're not sure. And like, But when you know you got the answer, it's like bring the test on. Mm -hmm. I need my pencil so I can mark A, B, and C. And then, in other words, check all of the above. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I got the answer. Uh, well, 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 my push for us today is to allow God to continue to develop in us the recognition that he already has overcome anything that the enemy would try to bring against you. All right, well then, First John, First John, John chapter 4, verse 4, we're going to get through the whole verse here now. Ye are of God, little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Where is he? In me. Mm -hmm. He, and then here's my little clarification point, uh, because uh, in the last message or two, I've been talking things about God talking things about walking and talking with Jesus and, and, and things of the nature. And I just need to, just to clarify just a little bit here, uh, one more time, in relationship to what I'm saying now, he in us now, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I'm talking about Holy Spirit, okay? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus is seated on the right hand of God in heaven. When he left up out of here, he, was, he had done what he needed to do. And listen, and listen, like people, Jesus come by my house. No, listen, you don't want Jesus to come back like right now. Come on now. You, you know, because 
uh, when he comes back, that's it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. So then, so then, just again, clarification point, when I'm talking about presence, I'm talking about God's power, I'm talking about Holy Spirit in us, Holy Spirit power at work with us, and Holy Spirit is, mm, wow. See, I, see, I hesitated because I thought I'd run into a political correctness issue. I started to say Holy Spirit is a gentleman, but these days, some, oh, dear, who are you calling a gentleman? I'm a woman. I'm a woman. Why are you? I, I'm no gentleman. I guess you're not, babe. <laughs> Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Huh? He doesn't run around barging in on you. Mm -hmm. He doesn't run around trying to make thus and so and this and that. So therefore, it becomes important for us recognizing that he is in us and that he is person. Hmm? So you can speak to Holy Spirit just like you speak to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A Jewel said in a class session, she wake up in the morning, she said, good morning, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to start your day off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that he's there, mm -hmm. bless the Lord, uh, and, that, uh, and then invite him <laughs> to tell you some things mm -hmm. and, 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 and have him go along with you through the course of the day. Mm -hmm. So just like if we think in terms of talking to God, talking to Jesus, or wanting God to come, or wanting Jesus to come, we have the person of Holy Spirit here with us now. Amen? Amen. All right, so long clarification there. Uh, to keep establishing the point that I want us to raise this consciousness thinking process that he is in us now. Yes. And I'm telling you, uh, the, the tide is swinging in your faith. Amen. Amen. Things are changing in your faith. Amen. Things are becoming more of a benefit to you Amen. than what they used to be. Amen. As of right now. Amen. Mm -hmm. So then, here's another uh, 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 impact that we need to make on our thinking processes. Stop feeling like it's just going to be this way and it's been this way for so long, I'm just going to have to get used to it. Amen. No, Amen. you don't have to get used to nothing. Amen. Because Holy Spirit will lead, Holy Spirit is leading us. Yeah. Yeah. That whatever is going on that's not for our benefit, that's not for our good, is changing right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so allow yourself to have the attitude that, okay, God can work that out. Mm -hmm. That God is working that out. Yeah. And, and start to look for mm -hmm. things to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, let me see. <clears throat> okay. So then we'll go to our support text scriptures found in the Gospel according to Matthew, the first one. Chapter 28, verse number 20. Says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. All things. Teaching them hmm, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Boy, Jesus just said a mouthful there, didn't he? I mean, all of the things that he taught while he was here is a lot. And he said to the disciples, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and teach people to observe all of the things that I taught you. Amen. Well, <laughs> one of the things that Jesus taught, uh, one of the many, many things that he taught was to let people know you don't have to put up with the devil's mess. Amen. I mean, that's not, that's not Jesus. Way of saying it, but it's the way I feel. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. 
put up with his mess. Well, what is it? What is it that he tells us to do when mess shows up? What, is, what does he tell us to do? What does, he, what does he tell you to do sometimes when mess shows up? Come on, because I've had I've had communication this week with different people about they walk up, they mess just kind of just showed up. I mean, just like they mind your own business and then boom. Blood pressure sky high, boom. Some some something happened to the car, boom. Something happened at the house. What what kind of things did God? What kind of things has Jesus been teaching us that we do with dealing with the devil's mess shows up? I, I heard you Resist the devil. We catch your cares and do what? Come right. use his name, Fear pray, and, and don't be fearful and. Don't die. Yes, and do what else? Tell him to get them. Tell him to get them. Out. <laughs> yeah, because if you submit yourself to God, resist the devil, what will he do? He will flee. Now, that's not like sit down and have a conversation with him, invite him to have a cup of coffee, give him a cookie. <laughs> you send that bugger on his way. And, 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 and you, and, and I, I don't, I don't, it's not about gyrations and all of this kind of stuff. It's you tell him, you don't have no place here. Amen. I'm not putting up with your stuff. Amen. Get out. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, I did that and it's still up. Uh, when you do that, if, if you don't go, keep on doing it. Jesus right. didn't say, Jesus didn't say, do it. And uh, if you don't, if you don't go, then sit down, roll on the floor, and cry, and give up. No, you resist him. Yeah. Resist him, and every little kind of thing he tried to do. Now, I'm trying to get back into the temptation where the, the the enemy came and took Jesus out, and there were several different kind of things that he tempted Jesus with. Mm -hmm. One, but in every issue, in every place, he kept resisting him. By words. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So develop your attitude mm -hmm. that every time, anytime he shows up, mm -hmm. you're going to tell him a thing or two. Yeah. Amen. Get out. Amen. All right? Amen. Now he says, uh, teach the to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, when you do that, he says, and lo, mm -hmm. I am with you always. Mm -hmm. mm. Did I tell y'all the little story about? The, the preacher from the olden days, uh, back in olden days, preachers had this kind of thing where they talk a lot of times about, well, Jesus is with me, so I'm okay. And, and the deacon was, uh, amen, pastor. And the pastor kept saying, well, Jesus is with me, brother deacon. And so uh, after church was over and brother deacon was driving on the way home, he looked up and there was the pastor's car over in the ditch on the side of the road. And the, the deacon pulled up real quick. He jumped out of the car, ran over there, and he said, Brother Pastor, are you doing okay? And the pastor said, Yes, deacon, I'm okay. Jesus is with me. He said, Well, you better let Jesus come and ride with me before you kill him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus said, Lord, I am with you always. <laughs> So then, he is with us. So therefore, let's carry this consciousness because, you know, there's some places, there's some places and some times where technically we don't want Jesus around. <laughs> and we don't want Holy Spirit. We prefer if he just, you know, he just wait down the street and I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> you know, I got to go handle my business, but you wait right now, I'll be right back. But that don't happen like that. He's with us always. Now, I'm going to throw this little plug in here so that we can have a little bit of relief in terms of even if we mess up, say the, say the wrong thing, do something stupid, he doesn't, he doesn't leave us. He doesn't abandon us. He doesn't kick us out and disown us and all that kind of thing. He's still right there with his love. Mm -hmm. yeah. to heal us, to pick us up, to strengthen us, to change us, to fix us. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, 
Always is always, always, all the time, everywhere, <laughs> with everything. He's with us. Okay, the gospel story, Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Now, uh, I said in the introduction statement about the breaking news flash is that he will lead us by his spirit in us. So I pulled out from there, Romans chapter 8, verse number 14, and I need you to hear this as being the word of God. Romans chapter 8, verse number 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then, and I'm going to teach more about this in the next few sessions, what have you. So it sounds like it's critically important to be being led by the Spirit. As a matter of fact, it establishes with us a relationship with God. Being led by the Spirit of God puts us in the place of being what? The sons of God. And you talk about, listen, my sons, my, listen, listen, I will shoot you about my sons. I will kick your teeth in about my sons. And, and don't get me started on my grandkids. Huh? So then, when we are sons of God, that means God is our Father. Huh? That's why you see me addressing Father God. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father. Because there's a powerful connection, relationship that is situated in this reality that we are sons of God. The God, say a little while ago, who knows everything everywhere present, the God who has all power is my Father? So then, the key of a sort to that relationship connection is to be being led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now we've dealt with books on being led by the Spirit. We've had class sessions you know, tons of sermons and teachings about being led by the Spirit of God. Well, the bottom line is, it's necessary. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's important. And then, therefore, uh, I need you to take a little few seconds. Don't go far away. Just stay here. Just <laughs> take a few seconds thinking through your head. For you, what does it mean to be, for you, to be led by the Spirit. Or, or if I press it even a little more, uh, how are you led by the Spirit? And then getting real nosy, when was the last time Holy Spirit led you thus and so to deal with this or that? Or the other? And what I'm pressing here, what I'm pressing for here is for us to do a to, to do a cognitive, to do a inventory of a sort of how does Holy Spirit lead Cynthia? Mm -hmm. how, how, how does Holy Spirit lead us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, hey, I'm going to say different strokes for different folks, but that's just because I want you to chuckle a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, he will lead you the way you will follow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, watch this, on one hand, if you don't follow, he's not going to lead. Mm -hmm. He will let you go anywhere you want. He'll let you climb up the rough side of the mountain. <laughs> you know, he'll, 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 he'll have you walk through the storm and through the fire and through the valley all by yourself mm -hmm. if you choose not to be led. But the challenge here is to, to, to connect with how does he lead me? Now, for, 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 for Stanley Scott, um, leading happens uh, different ways. Leading happens by voice on the inside, spirit voice. 
Leading happens by impression. Uh, uh, leading happens by scripture. Uh, leading happens by... <coughs> now, again, I think I remember last week, I spent a whole lot of time explaining to people that I'm not spooky and all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, when I said the angels come visit visited me at different times of... So I have to tell you again, I'm not spooky, but there are times when I physically feel a nudge mm -hmm. from Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I just do now, you, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but I, what I want here is for each of us to go back and, and, and check again as to how does Holy Spirit lead me? Because the leading of that Holy Spirit is the challenge for us to follow in order that we we function in our position of being sons of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, I'm sure, just because just because we are human, that uh, 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 there's a lot of things that we've been taught to do just because you're supposed, that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. and, and this and that. But there is a definite, clear decision that needs to be made on a consistent basis to yield to Holy Spirit lead. Mm -hmm. So you got to find out what that is and the different ways so that when you are led and it does in fact come to pass, like God said, like Holy Spirit said, then you say, oh yeah. That one works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that next time you, you have a need, which is which is all the time, mm -hmm. that you should be looking and listening for Holy Spirit. Oh, let's say it like this. You should be listening for Holy Spirit direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. About what you should do about thus and so, and what you should say about this and that. Amen. All right, so I'm getting ready to wrap up. Only God. One more scripture. Then I'll be done. Y'all believe that? That's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Just before we go, I want to say this about being led by the Spirit of God. I wrote this down extra. It's important to be a good follower. Amen. How many of you like people to follow you? Follow, do what you say. Mm, yeah. Especially cheering and stuff like that. Well, the best way to be a good leader is to do what? Be a good follower. And I promise you, following the leading of Holy Spirit will develop leadership on the inside of you. That people will recognize and honor. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm checking to see if this is me. No, it's, 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 it's a good one. Just like I said the other week, when you are telling your children do this, but you are physically doing that, yeah. womp, 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 your words are just like womp, womp, womp. Right. Mm -hmm. Going in one ear and out the other, if you get that far. Huh? So then, to be a good leader, it's important to be a good what? Follower. And the best following to do is the being led, when you're being led by the Spirit, to be the good follower, to develop you being a good leader. Because somebody is following you. Somebody watching you. Somebody is considering you to be their example. I mean, to push it super spiritually, you are somebody's epistle, mm -hmm. and they're reading yes. you yes. in relationship to getting an understanding about how God works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So here, here comes Psalm number 91, stanza 11. It reads like this. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to do what? Keep. To keep thee in all 
of our ways. Now I was jogging the other day. I was jogging the other day. And uh, I, I, I try to always be sure to pray, Potter, protect me today from potholes. <laughs> oh, yeah. And stone chips. Oh, yeah. And uh, crazy drops. Yeah. Okay, all right, all right. People read, people, people on their text, on their phones, and, all, and, they drop, and then some folk who don't understand the, the, the language to know. And so I was, I was so, so, so. Uh, I have to come over here to church or something, something. and uh, so things went fine. He, he zipped me around one pothole, and, and uh, uh, the traffic was kind of back up on 696. Lord oh, Jesus, wow. come on, y'all, get it, please. get it, please. get it. Please. Uh, I mean, nine miles is clogged, ten is clogged, eleven clogged, twelve clogged, thirteen clogged. Mound is like I saw a little, uh, a little thing on. Uh, <laughs> on Instagram or Twitter, this car drive down. This guy said, "This is like driving on Mound Road. Drive down in the bottle and back up." Anyway, so uh, I talked. I was feeling feeling good about the prayer part. Like, oh yeah, God is protecting us. He's watching over. So then, I said, "Did what I need to do to the church? Come back home. I was on my way back home, and they came off of Mound Road, back up into a little part of our subdivision." And there's a deer on the little side back in the field. And I'm looking at this little deer. I'm like, wow, that's a nice little deer with his big old floppy ears. And when I thought about his floppy ears, I thought about all of y'all that got them big floppy ears. <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe why. This is maybe why what happened. What happened. I'm looking at this little deer. <laughs> Next thing I know, bump him over the but then I had a little, then I had a little crisis moment. Because my first time, well, God, hey, I told you, I asked you <laughs> to help me while I was dressed. How come I'm riding over this curb? Now I don't know if I done beat the rim on the tire and all, and all and this and all. So then, then, I had this moment of he, no, I had this moment of there's nothing going to happen in my life that God cannot work out for my good. Amen. Nothing. Yes. Absolutely. Nothing. Yeah. So then, instead of stressing mm -hmm. over the bump over the curb and back, and, 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 and you know, the first thing you look around and see who was looking. <laughs> <laughs> and then you look for the law, see if you're being drunk. <laughs> but anyway, so when I calmed down, then I said, okay, God, whatever that was about, I trust you. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Amen. Whatever. See, so, so listen, so then, how about this? Don't even let bad stuff happen. Get you off God. Because he gives his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. No matter what happens, God has his angels to be sure that the deal is going to work out. Huh? Now, 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 I'm going to focus. I've got one more couple points. But listen. To get the strength to be able to say, instead of complaining about what happened, instead of having a whole lot of bad attitude about what happened, be able to just say, okay, God, whatever that is, I'm trusting you to happen. Yeah. 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 Whatever this happened, I'm trusting you to work it out. Mm. Yes. No matter how this hard it was, no matter how long it's been, I'm trusting you yeah. that whatever it was, you can deal with it. Now I'm reminded, I'm reminded, Dr. Charles Stanley, and I was watching him a little bit last night too. Dr. Charles Stanley, he was saying, was him or was it uh, John Hayden? This is Dr. Charles Stanley. He said he was walking through his house, he tripped on a little piece of carpet, and he heard the bone break mm -hmm. on his way down to the floor. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he hit the floor, he started laughing. Mm -hmm. He's saying, God, I don't know what's going on, but whatever it is, you got something good out of this for me. I mean, he heard the bone crack on the way down. 
So then, so then, I'm inviting you to have that appreciation that you're a son, daughter of God, that you're a child of God, that through being led by the Holy Spirit and through Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, you have overcome any and everything yeah. that comes along yeah. in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And the first reaction of a sort that you have to whatever is going on should be reestablishing or emphasizing your trust and your confidence in God. Yeah. Amen. Whatever it is. Yeah. And you'd be, you, you're going to be amazed as to how things are going to turn for your benefit. Amen. Huh? Okay, now I'm done. Here's my teaching point. Well, no, wait, wait, wait. Well, well I had wrote down here. So when it said teaching all I wait, all is all. Yeah. All of them. The good ones, the bad ones, the ugly ones, whatever. He keeps you in all yeah. of your ways. Now, here's my teaching point. <coughs> we get what we believe and do. Mm -hmm. I throw this out here every now and then. Uh, not to be hard, but to help with a, a sense of reality that Whatever is going on now, mm -hmm. it's going on because you was believing. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever is going on now, whatever whatever you've been through over the last few days, over the last few months, the last few years, it's based on what you believe. Amen. Mm -hmm. Whether it's been good stuff, bad stuff, it's connected to what you believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to ask this question. If you don't like what's going on now, what do you need to do? Believe. Change what I believe. And when you change what you believe and do what you believe, you will have what you believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, okay, I can still say it. I can still say it. Uh, some of us need to say, I believe I have a house full of happy children. Amen. Amen. You hear that? Amen. I believe I have a house full of happy children. Yes. Amen. Or you can say, like, I believe there's peace in my life. Yes. Yes. I believe there is joy <laughs> in my house. Yes. Wow, we were listening to Dr. Avery Jackson every week, and he was talking about, uh, uh, he, he teaches with uh, um, Dr. Caroline Deak and them, and they were talking about how powerful <clears throat> laughter is mm -hmm. toward helping us be healthy. Yes. Yes. And to help deal with physical stuff mm -hmm. inside the physical body. Mm -hmm. So then, you need to laugh more around the house. Yes. You need to just laugh more. Yeah. I mean, some of y'all need to laugh now. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Laughter, uh, the scriptures say, merry heart, but good, yeah. that's good, like a medicine, yeah. like a medicine. It really is medicine. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when you believe you have joy mm -hmm. in your house mm -hmm. and you laugh in your house, yes. joy comes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, I got to stop now. I got to, uh, uh, so you check. If you don't like what's going on, change what you believe. Right. All right. Then the action point. Uh, I'm inviting you. I'm challenging you. I'm encouraging you. Please, ma'am, sir, brother, sister, build your mind and spirit strength to choose to be alert to God's daily presence and then follow Holy Spirit's leading. Build your mind strength. Build your spirit strength to choose to be alert 
that God's presence is with us daily. Uh, oh, uh, back there, back there when I said about having conversation in prayer time and that, 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 I want to tuck in this little, little uh, idiosyncrasy that I used to do in teaching <laughs> that when I talk to you, I don't constantly call your name Nancy, Lucy, Pam, Dwight, Trudy, Gerald. I don't, Gerald, do this. Gerald, come over here. Gerald, stand up. Gerald. Sit down, Gerald. I love you, Gerald. Thank you, Gerald. So I love you, Gerald. On today, Gerald. Thank you, thank you, Dennis. Dennis, thank you. So when you're talking to God, you don't have to keep saying his name. He, hey, he know who he is. <laughs> because every time you say his name, he's going to say what? <laughs> what can I do for you? Huh? Yeah, what, 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 what? And you keep calling him name, he's going to be what, what, what? He's going to be more time answering you calling him his name than he is dealing with what you pray to him. <laughs> so just have a conversation with God. Just talk to him. Just like you talk. And you don't have to scream and yell and go through all kinds of things. Just have a good, gentle conversation with him and watch him work in your life. Yeah. All right, determination point. Uh, <clears throat> The challenge is to trust that better life. Say out loud, better life. Better, better, life. Life. better life is ours. Better life is ours. Now, and as we commune more with him, Holy Spirit, about every item of our lives, better life manifests. It just does. I, I wish there was some. I wish there was some magical way, or I wish there was some kind of formula or something that we could physically do. But the issue is that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. When we trust God, when we believe Him, when we commune with Him about everything, we get to the place where better life just shows up. It happens. And I pray and believe in Jesus' name that you recognize Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. God is with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me about to stand up on your feet if you will. Bless your darling heart. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for uh, being on the conference call. Thanks for uh, being on Facebook Live with us. Uh, be sure, please, to share this video on your page as well, if you will, in order that others can receive from that. And hello to all of those of you who are watching from other lands around us. Let's take this moment and share again the gospel. I'm sharing this gospel, one, as a reminder for us to be refreshed. Sharing this gospel, number two, for us to be equipped strengthened to share gospel with others. I, I, I say over you, I prophesy over you, the Spirit of God will be sending opportunity in this week coming for you to share the gospel and to get people born again. So the gospel is found in the gospel in John chapter 3 verse number 16. We're putting the words of it on the screen in order for us to read it together again out loud. This is the gospel. Ready? Read. For God, God so loved the world. world. Yes. That he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this gospel points us to salvation. With so many things going on around us, it's important for us to key in on getting people saved. Amen. Getting them into the kingdom of God. Oh, we got social programs. We got political system issues going on. Dealing with people about this. Dealing with people about that. Giving stuff to people. Hey, this best gift we can give to anybody is salvation. Amen. Salvation is found in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 because the gospel points to salvation. Salvation is found in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. We put that verse up as an example, too. It's up there, ready? Read. Let him die, shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. 
thou shalt be saved. That's what it is all about. And we challenge you to repeat this prayer with us. Say out loud. God in heaven, God in heaven. Thank, you thank you for today. I believe your word is true. I believe your word is true. I believe you sent your son Jesus. I believe you sent your son Jesus. Because of your great love for me. To save me from my sins. To save me from my sins. He shed his blood. He shed his blood. To cleanse me from all unrighteousness. To cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And I receive Jesus now. I receive Jesus as my master. As my master. To save me. I make Jesus the Lord of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I'm born again. I'm born again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, find yourself a good Bible believing teaching uh, church. Amen. Check out our website, stc.church. You find out more information about salvation and ways to connect with us on our other social media sites. We love you. God bless you. Keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Goodbye. Amen.